Hello everybody, this is part two, or the second video, of our short series on middle-middle defense. So if you have not seen part one where we look at the middle back defender, you may want to go look for that first. All right, so left back defender. Uh, the left back defender, their base position is going to be two steps off of the 10 foot line, like two steps back and two steps off of the sideline. So two steps away, kind of like you see here with a blue triangle on this image. Um, it's not, I had, didn't do a great job doing this to scale, um, but had I done maybe a little bit better, you would see that the blue triangle was in a little bit of this yellow shadow that's kind of off to the left, above and to the left of our gray triangle. Basically, our heat map for where balls are being hit, um, it extends kind of almost like a really, really flat bowl out towards um, the left and the right, but curving up. And so we want this defender to kind of be in base near the top of that um, because we see that for one, there's some good teams out there that can run a shoot fast enough that we can they can hit that spot before we have time to react to it. Um, but also because we, in this spot, we can move to play some setter dumps um, while also being ready for a really fast middle attack. Um, but yeah, so the, kind of the principle here is we're starting where the ball comes fastest, thus being in a good position to play a fast middle attack, a decent position to play a setter dump, um, and a good position to defend a really fast shoot to an outside hitter. Um, and so what, what we'll call this position some of the time is two by two. You can see that on the in the notes to the left there, um, which means two steps off and two steps in. Uh, that's important because there'll be so like 10 by 10 later in this video you're well maybe not this video but a few videos down the road you'll hear 10 by 10 as a position 10 by 10 is in feet 10 feet by 10 feet this is two by two which is two steps by two steps uh two feet would put you very 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 close to each of those lines but two steps kind of gets us back a little bit farther so against an outside attack uh, it's still relatively simple, but this defender does have a decision to make. So while the middle back defender just turns and faces, uh, the left back defender starts by turning and facing and then has a decision to make. So first they turn, like you see with this blue triangle, and face the outside hitter. Um, and then they have to decide, are they going to stay where they are or go play the corner? And basically what you want to be thinking in that situation is where I'm standing, do I think this hitter can hit at me? So we're looking at the hitter, we're not considering the block. We wanna look at that hitter and say, oh, it looks like they're hitting a line. I better shift towards the corner in case it comes off weird or they're being sneaky and they're gonna somehow hit this corner a little bit better. So that's the kind of the one read decision here is either you stay where you were in base and play kind of the sharper cross, the ball that's hit nearer to the 10 foot line, or you go to the corner and you help the middle back defender play this deep corner area. It's very similar against a right side attack. Well, actually, that's a total lie. It's not that similar against a right side attacker. Um, it's the same as the way the right back defender would be against an outside attacker. We'll get to that in a bit, though. Sorry for that little hiccup there. Um, basically, you want to get from this kind of dotted triangle, which is about that base position, we want to get off, um, get off of that base position and get back probably halfway down the court if we can and be about arm's reach from the line. So what we're doing here is we're defending the line shot. So wherever we get, we wanna get there and be stopped. But ideally we're about an arm's reach from the net, for, from not, sorry, not from the net, from the sideline. So that if a ball is real deal hit straight down the line, we could reach it and play it. Um, but we also know from this map that even good hitters typically hit a few feet off the line. There's not a lot of shots that really hit right on the tape and beat us right there. So it's better to be a few feet off and then we can kind of help with the more common shot that's going to be maybe halfway between us and that gray middle middle defender there, which we need to help playing too. And this blue block, this blue box that you see here, we'll have a few of those in these videos. This is the kind of your tip coverage. 
Um, the rule of thumb for middle middle defense is that if you see a tip, you go get it. Like that's kind of the way I would I would rather this be coached. That if you can see that this person is going to tip and you can get there fast enough, absolutely go play it. Um, but in general, a ball tipped kind of in this zone, this blue box, is going to be covered by this left back defender. So that's why part of the reason why it's going to be so important to get to this spot quickly is because you need to be stopped so that if this, if this right side hitter decides to tip, we can run through this ball and go save it or lay out and go save this ball. But you kind of cover this straight area ahead of you um, while the area more kind of... Um, like the two zone and the three zone, if we're talking about like service uh, service order up in the top right and kind of middle top, that area is gonna be covered by the blocker or the off blocker. So in this case, our uh, right side hitter who's not blocking, they've pulled off to cover the zone to the right of your tip zone. But same deal here that we talked about with the middle middle defender. It's super important to play balls with our hands. So we're not going to get so deep down the line that we could play any ball hit down the line with our platform because if we get that deep, they can just tip every time. Or even some hitters are going to be able to hit so short that we won't be able to dig them at all. So we want to stay where we are, and if hitters hit high, we go up with our hands and play those balls with our hands. Um, yeah, I think those are, those are the main things we want to hit with this, this one. So against the middle, we stay in base. Um, this is going to be true for all of our back row defenders against a, a standard middle attack. And that's the what all we're really going to be talking about in this video is like a middle is attacking in the one, like running a fastball in the one or even a two right there next to the setter, kind of middle of the court. We stay in base and just turn and face. So we want to play high balls with our hands when we have to. Um, but we're really not going to move at all. We know a lot of for middles specifically, um, the hot zone is still basically the center of the court, but um, this, if we were to just look at middles, it's a lot more common for a middle to hit kind of right where this base defense is. They can hit that shot pretty well, and so we need to be able to defend that shot too. We also want to be close by because uh, the left back defender needs to help with the tip coverage here because typically um, if we're defending against a middle attack, our outside hitter who would be in front of the left back kind of in this blue tip zone, they've gone to help with the block. So they're blocking and if that, that red triangle, the middle, if they decide to tip over the block into the blue zone, the only person who can cover it is this left back defender. There's nobody else there to help. So they need to be there in order to help with that play. It's the toughest tip area to cover, probably, probably in the entire game of volleyball. Um, which is why a lot of responsibility in defense falls to our left back defenders. We'll have some good defenders. So common questions with this. So why don't we put base on the 10 foot line? It would help us cover dumps. You know, we're closer to the net so that if, you know, a, a setter is dumping right there, we can pick it up a lot easier. And it's really just that um, a lot of high school teams can run plays fat, so fast that if we stay there, like if we start there, on the 10 foot line, we can't get off quick enough to play something. Um, we also know that almost nobody actually hits the 10 foot line. So we, if we start there in base, we pretty much guarantee that we're gonna have to move. Um, and if you start on the 10 foot line in base and then realize you need to dig down the line, you have to get so far back to have a chance of digging the ball. And uh, it'd be much better to start a little further back and, in, and instead work on reading the setter. So we can read a setter dump and go play it rather than relying on being close and then giving up a lot of deep attacks. Um, second question is, why don't we get deeper against middles? The answer to that is basically, uh, you can't. Most middles are attacking so fast that if you're trying to back up and move to play this ball, they'll have hit it and you'll be too late. Um, and also we know that still a lot of balls get hit right to these base positions when a middle attacker is hitting straight out of the middle. So we wanna cover that play and uh, play the deeper balls with our hands or rely on our middle back defender having a good read to move left to right and help us with those deeper balls. Um, why don't we directly protect the corner against an outside attack? So um, that's a good question. We could just, like we saw let's see, um, here, we, the corner position. Why don't we just go there automatically when the outside hitter is hitting? It seems like they're probably gonna hit there more. And that is true. Probably outside hitters based on this heat map are going to hit 
that this kind of uh, longer middle line in that direction more than they're going to hit this sharp cross towards the 10 foot line. But for one, we have a middle back defender nearby who can help with this. And for two, we can't by default give up that position because there are hitters who can hit that. I have a kid on my travel team right now who hits sharp cross better than she hits anything else in the game. So we need to have that person, our defender there in case we play hitters like that who really do hit sharp cross almost every time. We want to be there to pick it up. And the heat map still shows that a lot of balls are hidden to that spot. So we need to go there and work on reading the hitter. And if we see like, you know what, this hitter is not hitting at this spot, let's move and take away the corner instead. Uh, fourth question, why don't we put a foot on the line when we dig down the line? So this is something some coaches teach where if you're digging line, like um, we saw here, rather than being arms reach from the line, they want you to have your left foot on the line to kind of give you a guide point. And uh, I'm not super opposed to that, but what that means is you you now have kind of created a dead zone where like you could play a ball that's to your left, but if you've put your left foot on the line, anything to your left is out. So now this whole move where we could stretch out a platform over here and play the ball, I'm not sure if that's reversed, but I'm, I'm moving to my left side. You can, uh, that becomes a valuable move for us if we, st if we stay off of the line. If we're on the line, any ball hit that way is out, so we wouldn't need to touch it. It makes, it makes a lot more sense to scoot off the line and have basically cover more of the court. Um, by doing that. We don't want to stand on the line because then a lot of where, a lot of the area that it's easiest for us to cover is going to be out of bounds, which we don't have to cover anyways. Last question here, why does this player have a read decision but the middle middle doesn't? So that's a good question. Um, I get this a lot from some of my players. The left back defender has a read because there tends to be more variation in this zone. So you see like this whole area that uh, that our left back defender is covering is mostly kind of this yellowish, maybe blue color on our heat map, whereas the middle middle defender is in orange the whole time. We know tons of balls go to middle middle, so they just need to stay there and help play those balls and occasionally make a read to go play a little bit outside their zone. But our left back defender, they're in this mm, kind of trickier spot where there's more variability. Hitters hit differently and uh, Balls land in more random places as you get farther and farther away from middle-middle. So this defender has more court to cover because they're probably going to get hit at a little bit less than that middle-back defender is, if that makes sense. All right, and that uh, wraps up our left-back defender video. We'll do another one right after this. Uh, for the right-back defender, it's going to be very similar. Um, so hopefully that'll go a little bit quicker than this one did.